Hello, my name is Rita Fleming. I'm so excited and passionate to be here with you all today. Thank you, Sister Stone, for organizing this beautiful, amazing event. I come to you from Ute lands, where you're surrounded by mountains, 360 degrees around you, that look like crystals jutting out of the earth, and where the wildflowers actually stand taller than you, and where it snows in July. <laughs> and where you can go into ancient groves and be surrounded by thousands of eyes from aspen trees. And I come from a community that really protects the land and supports each other and knows each other. My mother is a yogi of 37 years studying ancient Patanjali studies. Um, she's an artist and an activist. My father is an author and he's so passionate about conserving energy that he'll barely heat his home in the middle of winter when it's negative degrees. So those are my roots and my foundation, and I'm excited to explore what I'm passionate about, which is regenerative health, regenerative agriculture, and regenerative business models and systems. So I came into regenerative health out of necessity. When I was 19, I was in a near-death car accident. I broke 16 bones. I broke my spine off. I couldn't walk unassisted for a year and a half. And I was told that I would never get back to normal activities such as dancing and running um, and athletics and sports. And so I was determined to find a solution and an answer. And it took me over 10 years, but I studied everything I could from medical anthropology to Eastern medicine and studies to um, emotional and spiritual healing and nutrition. <laughs> I really dove into all of it. And finally, but I was still in chronic pain and I was having trouble even just walking up and down stairs or getting up off the ground into standing or from standing into you know the floor. And so I was actively looking for solutions. And I finally came across the works of Dr. Robert Morse, who I studied with. He's an amazing mentor and friend. And he was the first person I came across that said, yes, Rita, you can totally regenerate your spine and get out of pain. And so I dove into his 14 week herbal protocol and all of his studies which really resonated with me because it was speaking to elements that I'd never heard discussed before. And so I wanna dive into some of those main elements with you today so you can apply them into your life. I also have free resources on all of these, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, the first component of regenerative health is getting the body alkaline. And that's actually for, through our foods, through our fresh fruits and our veggies and our herbs. And so most of us, um, generally speaking, are living, um, eating foods that are primarily acid forming, leaving a mineral ash deposit um, that, that is acidic in nature. Um, and fresh fruits and veggies and herbs leave behind a mineral ash deposit that is alkaline forming and that's like your calcium and some of your and your magnesium or some of your more alkaline for, forming um, minerals and so what happens is over multiple generations we get this build up of lymphatic congestion and we can be born with chronic lymphatic congestion from as children because our kidneys are not properly eliminating or filtering, which we'll get to. But when the body has that lymphatic congestion, the tissues start to degenerate. We can see arthritis, you know, inflammation in the joints. We can see Alzheimer's and such things. We can see long-term chronic conditions such as cancers and autoimmune. Um, and so when we get the body alkaline, what happens at the cellular level is the cells are able to disperse and breathe. Whereas in an acidic environment, um, the cells get stagnant and congested and stuck together. 
And in that environment, they're not able to eliminate those cellular wastes, nor are they able to um, get their nutrients and their oxygen in. And so when it's in an alkaline chemistry through the foods that we're eating, all of a sudden the cells are spreading apart and it's like a free flowing river and they're able to eliminate their own cellular waste so the cells can be healthy because they also have to eliminate waste. And then they're able to receive nutrition and oxygen, which brings me to my next step um, in regenerative health, which is cellular energy and cellular ATP. So we're actually eating for the health of our cells, for the mitochondria in our cells. And just to smile, we need 7,000 units, angstrom units of energy um, in order to smile. And oftentimes when we're dealing with um, long-term chronic conditions such as cancer, the body's at about 5,000 angstrom units of energy. And so fruit actually has the highest measurement of angstrom energy, and it's the easiest absorbed by our body. It's absorbed through a process called cellular diffusion, and it goes straight into those cells. And those cells need two things to survive. Um, for fuel, for energy. They basically have two food sources. One is oxygen, and two are your simple sugars from your fresh fruits and your veggies. And that is what creates that cellular energy or that cellular ATP. And in order to regenerate the body, we need tons of energy. And so when I was going through my own process of regeneration, I had to re-experience my car accident all over again um, and eliminate those pains that were in my shoulder in every aspect of my body. And so in order to do that, I had to have enough cellular energy to actually repair those tissues and eliminate those damaged tissues and that inflammation that was in my body that had been built up. So it's a really, it passes in, in only a few days, but as the body gets alkaline and the cells get energized, Anything that has been suppressed, either at a physical level or an emotional level, comes to the surface to heal. And so that can look like old injuries coming to the surface. It can look like an earache from when you were three years old and we took um, an antibiotic to suppress it, um, which meant that it never fully expressed itself. And so it still actually exists at a cellular level, at a lymphatic congestion level. And so when the body gets alkaline, it's finally able to release those suppressions <laughs> and it goes from a chronic state, which we're not feeling or experiencing, but it's causing long-term damage in the future. It will show up in the future. And we're moving that chronic suppression to a subacute state, which now we're starting to feel those symptoms. Um, and it can be a cold and flu-like symptom. It can be a headache. It can be those old things coming to the surface. And then we bring it to an acute state. And that's as if it had just happened. So like you accidentally burn your finger, you know, like you experience it and you feel that pain in that moment. And so it brings it to the surface where we have to feel and experience it. And part of that process is definitely deep emotional healing and trauma healing. And one of my favorite ways to move through this um, that helped me so much in my own journey actually comes from the Hawaiian culture and tradition of restoring balance, which is called Honoponopono. And I, it's basically the components of it are, I forgive you, I love you, I'm sorry, I thank you, I forgive myself, I love myself, I'm sorry, and I thank you. And oftentimes that mantra can be so helpful when old traumas that we don't even know what they're from because they're from multiple generations are coming to the surface or old emotions that we hadn't quite processed. Maybe we got scared when we were three years old and we didn't know how to process it. You know, that can come to the surface. So it's this beautiful process of not only physical healing, but emotional healing. Um, and so that's what is happening when we get that alkalinity and then enough cellular energy to actually release those stored, suppressed 
lymphatic congestions and damaged cells and tissues and emotional deposits. So the third component is your organs of elimination. And the primary one we're going to talk about today is kidney filtration because most people's kidneys are not actually filtering, meaning eliminating that cellular waste at the capacity in which we need it to, to have actual regeneration and actual tissue repair. And so, like I was mentioning, we can be born with chronic lymphatic congestion that's passed down from multiple generations because our parents, you know, kidneys were not properly eliminating that waste. Um, actually, who I see has the strongest genetics from a constitutional standpoint is our grandparents um, because they were eating organic foods and they weren't exposed to so many environmental toxins. And so their genetics constitution, the strength and the health of their organs and their glands and their tissues and their nervous system is so much stronger than what I see in our youth and our babies who are coming in much more compromised because they're being passed down multiple generations of toxicity and congestion, which leads to tissue weakness um, and endocrine weakness, which we'll get to in a minute. But the beautiful thing, the beautiful reason I do this work is we can actually strengthen our own genetics and our tissues and our health and our function and actually pass off stronger genetics than what we inherited. And a huge component of that, um, one of the number one components of that is kidney filtration. So your fresh fruits are going to help you with this. Specific herbs are going to help you with this. It often takes a few months to get those kidneys filtering, but if you want um, a pamphlet on how to see if your kidneys are filtering um, and how to get your kidneys filtering, just reach out and I'll send that to you. Um, and so once that process happens, that's how I was able to get out of chronic pain is, um, and I was able to regenerate my body and rebuild my spine into a place where now it's in balance. Whereas before I had one side of my spine that was pulled way over, one side that was very um, indented and one side that was out. And now I have this symmetry, right? Um, and I don't have pain anymore. And so the process of tissue regeneration starts when we're able to eliminate that lymphatic congestion and toxins that are stored throughout the body. So the next piece is um, working with regenerative food sources, and this is huge. So after I went through my process with Dr. Robert Morse, um, within six weeks, my pain was reduced by 60%. Within 11 months, I was surfing again and running again. Um, but within a couple of years, I started to feel like, man, I, I feel healthy, but I feel like I'm missing something. I feel depleted and I ate really well. I was blessed to eat organic and all the things, blessed to work with, you know, permaculture farms um, and also blessed to grow my own food since I was a, a young girl, but I was still feeling depleted and I did still have to rely on going to the grocery store in the winter months and the food just didn't look vibrant. It looks like it didn't have, energetically, it felt like it did not have any sustenance to it. And that's how I felt when I would eat um, the food. I would feel full, but I wouldn't feel satisfied. And so I started working with regenerative food sources and nutrients um, and flooding my body with this. And within a few days, my, my cravings went away and I no longer felt depleted or like I was missing something. And so a lot of my passion comes to reconnecting people to regenerative food sources so that our bodies can get what they actually need um, and vitamins and minerals to repair. So the next component, um, number five, is gut health. And this directly relates to soil health as well. So if our soils are depleted, um, you know, and one of the primary factors of depleting our soils are the chemicals and 
glyphosate, which is, you know, 4 billion pounds of glyphosate are sprayed annually, which gets into our water, our food, our air, and it acts as an antibiotic killing off the soil health, <clears throat> but also killing off our gut health simultaneously. And the soil microbes communicate to our gut microbes, and then our gut microbes communicate to the mitochondria in our cells in order to create cellular health and communication. And so when our soils are depleted, <clears throat> um, you know, from not getting the nutrition from overworking a soil and also from adding in those chemicals, then we're not getting the nutrients that we need and neither are the plants. And so all of the medicinal properties of plants come from the soil and that's the alkaloids, right? So the anti-cancerous, anti-diabetic agents are all found in the soil. And if our soil is depleted and then our guts are depleted, we're not able to get what we need. <laughs> and so I really love to help people actually get that glyphosate out of the body in a healthy way so the gut can actually repair itself, have that natural diversity, um, which creates our health and creates that cellular communication. The sixth and final component is endocrine system health. And so our endocrine system consists of our pituitary gland, which is actually regulated by the hypothalamus, the back of the brain. Um, and then the pituitary gland regulates the rest of our endocrine system, including our pineal gland and our parathyroid and our thyroid and our thymus gland and our adrenals and, and so forth. And so endocrine health is one of the first things yet that gets impacted um, by environmental toxicity and, um, you know, exposure to toxins in our foods. And our endocrine system is amazing and powerful and also easily impacted. And so that kidney filtration is huge in order to clean up our endocrine system, which regulates all of the functions of our body. So for instance, our parathyroid gland is in charge of all of our calcium absorption and utilization. So when our parathyroid gland is weakened, we see such symptoms as scoliosis, as prolapsed organs, as varicose veins, wrinkly skin. All of that is actually indications of parathyroid weakness. And the beautiful thing is we can actually repair our parathyroid and regenerate it by working with high energy foods, alkaline foods, and herbs that are specific to the parathyroid. And then our adrenal glands, for instance, are so important from an emotional well-being standpoint. If someone is experiencing a lot of anxiety, that's also an indication that the adrenals are down. Um, if there's a lot of inflammation in the body or arthritis, that's an indication that the adrenals are down. Um, pain, also an indication that the adrenals are down. Irritability um, and also lack of ability to to manage stress or hand, handle stress. So when our adrenals are in a really healthy place, it doesn't matter what's going on around us. We can maintain our calm and our peace and respond accordingly. When our adrenals are shot, we can move into fight or flight um, or a tra trauma response. So adrenal health is huge for nervous system health and repair. Um, so that's kind of a basic rundown of regenerative health and the reason it's my passion is just because I suffered for so many years looking for solutions and then coming to the realization of like wow it actually comes down to simplicity and realigning with the principles of nature and our bodies can repair and regenerate um, when we're working with these different elements and so we can get younger and we can pass off stronger genetics to our next generation and they can pass off stronger to the next. So very fun topic um, and how that relates to regenerative agriculture as we spoke is so important. And the other component of regenerative agriculture is that, you know, 
we're really at a point in history where we do need to regulate those CO2 emissions. And so I see regenerative agriculture as a solution for that, um, where if even 10% of agriculture and 10% of small farmers and 10% of grassland grazing moved into regenerative systems, we'd be able to remove 46.5 gigatons of CO2 out of the atmosphere and put them back into the soil. And the statistics currently are that if we remove 26.5 gigatons of CO2 out of the atmosphere, we could reverse climate change. So I love all of the capacities in which um, restoring our soil health and our ecosystems has um, for, for our health and for our planetary well-being. So the next piece I want to speak to is regenerative business and regenerative business systems. Um, this is also a deep passion of mine. And so the three components I really love to think about and work with when we're speaking to regenerative business is the first one is our, our own personal well-being and personal development. Um, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, right? Putting ourselves in right relationship. And the second ring is really supporting our communities and developing our communities. And so if you're working in an organization, you're really developing the people that you work with to their own highest potential um, at all levels and really inspiring their own creative and creative genius, what they're here to do in the world, their own critical thinking skills and problem solving skills, giving them tools and systems to tap into their own resourcefulness um, so that we're not relying upon some system that's top down to tell us what to do, but we're actually finding solutions by going through our own creative process to get to them and to apply them. Um, and another part of that community development is we're really helping people with finding that deeper purpose, that deeper mission. We're also helping people to improve their own health, their own mental and emotional well-being, um, and giving back at that larger community level. So the next ring, I think of it as like a ring of a tree, is um, that planetary health. And so a regenerative business model supports personal development, community development, and improves our planetary health. So this can be working with local ecosystems, um, and it can also be in supporting practices that give back at that larger planetary level. So rather than taking and extracting from, we're giving back. So this can be plastic-free initiatives, this can be soil health incentives, this can be um, planting trees, you know, there's a lot of ways, but it's not just um, necessarily being neutral. It's actually about giving back and going above and beyond where we're creating solutions and standards. And this also comes down to the consumer because we're all consumers. And so supporting businesses and business models that support um, regenerative systems that support planetary health and well-being. So those are a few of my passions and I'm helping people at all of those levels um, aligning with regenerative business systems and models in order to make an income and an impact. And I think that regenerative business is the future. It's where we have to go. Um, businesses and business models that are not taking into account the their personal well-being, their community well-being, and the planetary well-being, um, I feel will be obsolete at some point in the future because we're coming to such a point where these now are not only so important, they're actually necessary. So if you want resources on any of those, please reach out. I'd love to collaborate. I'd love to share ideas and resources and ways in which we can support each other in moving these systems um, 
into the public <laughs> and, and play with it and really support each other at all of these levels because I think it's completely possible. I know it's possible um, from my own experience <laughs> of regenerative health and regenerative business. So, um, and one of my mentors in regenerative business is Carol Sanford. Check her out. She's, she's amazing and has a lot to contribute um, on these subjects. And so, yeah, please just reach out for free resources on all of this. And you can find me at rita-jean, J-E-A-N.com. And I look forward to connecting and learning from you and hearing about your passions and how you found um, your inspirations and joys and see ways that we can really uplift. Thank you. Aloha.